Thank you, <clears throat> Jack. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. We have, uh, over the last eight to ten years, worked with Oculus. Here are my financial disclosures for this meeting. I also want to thank Dr. Shayari, who helped in one of the studies we do it. Let me introduce today for you the, the topic, the exchange of, the change of expectation in patients is there. More precise measurements are necessary nowadays. From the simply biometry sufficient times, I think we have moved into the area <clears throat> where patient, when we're talking about multifocal lenses, want to see at near, intermediate, and distance. One thing we know is, if we do measurement correctly, we have better outcomes. Now, more precise measurements, if you look at IOL calculation, uh, come to this point that there are two variables very important, which is corneal power and axial length. And if you look into this, then you have a machine, which is the Pentacam AXL, two devices in one machine, which measure corneal power and axial lengths. And I would like to go in my talk a little bit about the background, what we have researched over time uh, <clears throat> in terms of the measurements. Jack pointed out nicely the report. He will come to this later, but I will just go to the background, what we have done over the time. Now, anterior and posterior corneal surface, the role of the posterior cornea was dismissed because of small difference between the indices of refraction uh, of the cornea and aqueous, and we had no option to measure corneal posterior surface. And there are some devices here which are there, and I just would like to highlight the Scheimflug imaging device. And the Scheimflug imaging device is basically a Scheimflug tomographer this is the um, schematic drawing of the pentacam, which takes a measurement and of the anterior chamber. Actually, how it works is demonstrated here. You take a lot of slits and put this picture then together. <clears throat> and then finally, you get this outcome. And you will see in the next talks a little bit about this Scheimflug tomography outcome, as you see here on this picture, which shows, for example, a catechonus on the right lower part. Now, we have a map of the anterior chamber, a more accurate model of the cornea, its thickness, and the posterior surface. This is very important. To assess total corneal power with the use of ray tracing for um, patients when you measure the anterior segment. <clears throat> now, let's look back at the corneal power, different views of the same eye. You see here the tangential, sagittal. You all are knowing these pictures from the left side from your placido devices, which takes both of the anterior part. But what is more important now is the total corneal refractive power, because we want to intercorporate posterior with the anterior with the posterior outcome, and these measurements can be done. Now, the total corneal refractive power is this picture here, uses ray tracing to calculate the power of the cornea. And you can see one example here, I get at the right side. Let's look at the sagittal, which is the placido device versus total corneal refractive power. This is a picture from the Pentacam device. And what I just highlighted the outcome here is, if you look at the K-max, which is something what you can measure with IOL master, with all this is 45.7, which you get from the interior surface. If you go to the posterior as well, so with other words, take the total corneal measurement, the real value is 45.4, so you have a difference of 0.3 diopters. Not much, but I'm saying if you want to do precise measurements, it's very important to see this difference. We have done three studies. I would quickly highlight them. One is on corneal power. The next one is on the axial length, and very shortly, briefly, at the end on IOL calculation. So there's a paper 2016. We did a keratometry measurement um, of the total corner refractive power with different devices. I show them here. It's a 45 patient uh, case series. Uh, the astigmatism was limited up to three diopters, five devices, keratometry, uh, a keratometer, an, ex an, an atlas device, an IOL master, lensa, and the Scheinflug tomographer did two measurements for each patient. And what we found is, just to summarize this for you, the Scheimflug SIM case measurement showed the highest rebeatability in this study. I highlighted these pictures here, as you can see them in red here. And what we also found is that the total corneal refractive power repeatability was best when you look at the four to five millimeter, ex uh, millimeter zone. 
There are sources of errors in measuring astigmatism, and one is posterior cornea. And so in this view, we looked over the time, and these were others who did the uh, information, posterior corneal astigmatism, the Koch group and Ho here, and we all found that the mean magnitude of the posterior astigmatism is by 0.3 diopters. Um, this paper is, uh, I think, the largest series worldwide, has a publication 2015, looking at this uh, actually. And what we did is we did all our measurements for these cases, Jack pointed out. These were almost 4,000 cases, healthy, unoperated eyes, in a retrospective case series. And we looked at anterior and posterior surface. And what we found is if the patient has with the rule, then most of the time, and the anterior part, most of the time at the posterior surface, you always have, also have with the rule. If you go to patients against the rule, then you have a variety of with the rule, oblique, and against the rule. And this information, basically what just published here in Investigative Ophthalmology, says to you, you have to measure it because you cannot predict it just from the anterior surface. So again, an example, sagittal versus total corner refractive power here. Um, I, I took this slide where you have a SIMK, two diopters of astigmatism, for example, with an IOL master lens star, these devices, and with a total corner refractive power in mind, this was 2.1 diopter. So there's a difference of 0.1. This is fine. So here in this case, you would have not missed it. But I give you another example, and that is in the SIMK here, you only have 0.1 diopter, but if you go to the corneal refractive, total corneal refractive power, including the posterior, you find one diopter. So here comes actually the difference, and you have to take maybe a toric IOL, for example, in presbyopia correcting IOLs, because you have to correct astigmatism. So the axial length, the gold standard for doing is PCI opt uh, optical biometry. These developments have been done over the last 15 years, and what Oculus has actually done, they have incorporated now this measurement into their Scheimflug tomographer. They put both machines in one. When it comes to axial length measurement, you can see this here, PCI in the Pentacam AXL. Um, just as an example, how you measure it, uh, you can see here the pictures. And the measurement of calculation routine is you take the axial length and a 3D scan measurement. Um, the Pentacam captures the axial length six times during each exam and measures only if the patient is fixating correctly. Vertex normal is used as a reference point and the eye motion during the imaging process is detected with the pupil camera and corrected during the calculation process. You have a 3D model and what we did is very shortly Pentacam to IOL Master 500 found no difference in the axial length measurements. And in the most recent study, 2017 AJO, we compared now the axial length measurement with the IOL master, with the uh, Pentacam device, with the AXL, to the IOL master 500 and the 700, which are the standard we're doing our calculations. And what we found is, very briefly, we found in this prospective case series that there was uh, I go to this a little bit more quickly. Simple bland Altman analysis was done. But what we found is repeatability intra device comparison. You see here the slide which looks at IOL Master 500 two times measured, 700 two times measurement, and the axial length with the AXL. But most importantly, the comparison between the devices did not show a significant difference in axial length measurement. So the conclusion is basic that you can do the axial length measurement with this machine. We also looked at the astigmatism component, all in this paper, and also here was a good outcome. I have to summarize for this, there was no significant difference between the axial length measurement, and we have favorite limits of agreement and no significant difference when comparing in terms of keratometry and ACD measurement. Um, so I already summarized all these. So Scheimflug measurement show high repeatability when it comes to corneal evaluation, and there's no significant difference between the IOL, the Pentacam AXL, and established biometries for measuring the axial lengths. Lastly, now you have to do, in this machine, IOL calculation. So what has Oculus done? They basically take the IOL power calculation, as you see here for the right and the left eye, and one example is that basically now, for the first time, that you take the corneal measurement, including the anterior and posterior, and then edit your axial lengths and put all together in one 
in one measurement device, and here you get an established, for example, an IOL with a touristy. I think that the next speakers will talk about it. IOL printout is here. Um, imaging keratometry overlay for toric IOLs is also available for basically putting these lens in the right position. And there's a nice uh, toric IOL platform printout for doing your calculations for touristy and of course for presbyopia correcting IOLs as well. So my take home message with the Pentacam AXL overall, we have a shine fluke measurement with high, showed high repeatability of corneal power evaluation. No significant difference for the axial length measurement between devices, established devices, and the AXL. And the Pentacam allows IOL calculation incorporating total corneal refractive power and posterior corneal astigmatism, which is, I think, a real advantage now, which we have with these devices. Thank you very much. <laughs>